So welcome to the Wednesday Somatics and Yoga class. I'm really thrilled to be here with you and let's dive in. Give me a moment here, I'm changing my camera angle. Mm. So it comes up on here. Okay, we are set. Let's dive in. So first, set yourself up at a place on the floor. Right. You will need a mat, two blocks, and a strap or a hand towel eventually. But to start out with, start lying down on your backs. Your knees can be bent or you can have your legs straight, but just take up some space. Allow yourself to take up some space on your floor. Maybe being curious about how you want to arrange your legs and your arms. It can be symmetrical or not. Just finding your space on the earth in this moment, noticing the contact with the earth, with the floor beneath you. Maybe even noticing the textures of the surfaces. If it's a softer surface, maybe noticing that there's a little bit of give. If it's a harder surface, noticing the steadiness of that, the firmness. And we'll be drawing inspiration from what you might know as beginner's mind. I have a quote for you by Shunryu Suzuki, um, who is the author of Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. And the quote goes something like this. The mind of the beginner is empty, free of the habits of the expert, ready to accept, to doubt, and open to all the possibilities. So may we, when we remember it throughout the course of this practice, approach this with a beginner's mindset opening to to surprise to to doubt to to just exploring things as though for the first time and seeing how that feels inside your body so now from this place on the floor I'm approaching it with that kind of beginner's mind curiosity i invite you to stretch out through your limbs and stretch through your torso and might be creating an X or, or some other shape. I right? just stretch. What would stretch feel like? Stretching out along the floor. And in stretching, just try to get really big and then try to get really, really small. Tuck your legs in, tuck your arms in, maybe even lift your head up and tuck up really small really compact and then come back into a big big stretch again whatever that looks like for you there might be some light movement involved or you might be still and then tuck in as tight as possible get really compact oh what needs to happen in your body to get really compact and then again really big really stretchy Really, really stretchy. Last time. And then tuck in. Ooh, really compact. And then get stretchy and start to explore some side bending or wiggling on the floor. Stretching and a little bit of side bending through your torso. Be stretching one arm up higher than the other. Feeling contact with the floor. Maybe bending a knee or both knees, bending one elbow at a time, but think moving side to side in some way, 
and allowing this to help you to stretch more. Maybe knocking your blocks down like I did. <laughs> And then from here, I invite you to move how it feels best, maybe lifting your legs and arms up. You can rock onto one side and explore getting compact and stretching. And this can happen with your belly facing the floor, or it can happen with your back still on the floor, but stretching and getting compact, tucking in and stretching out in different ways Just in relationship with the floor, compact and stretchy. And then continuing this idea of compactness and stretchiness. When you feel ready, allow that impulse to take you up to a standing position and taking your your time maybe eventually coming to bring your feet on the floor juxtaposing tucking in and stretching getting compact and stretching maybe it's just a part of your body that gets compact not the whole thing and stretching it out Mm -hmm. Good. And then do come up to a standing position. We'll kind of continue with this exploration of stretch. So really coming into this idea of stretch, maybe start with your arms reaching up and away, reaching forward, reach both arms forward. Just notice what it feels like to stretch your arms forward. How it kind of brings some spaciousness into the backside of your body, the stretch between your shoulder blades, reaching your arms forward and introducing light movement as you reach and reach and reach. And then stretch your arms out to the sides Imagine you're being lightly pulled from side to side in a way that feels kind of playful. But experience stretch from side to side. Oof. And bring your arms up overhead and imagine that you're reaching up toward the ceiling and maybe it's one arm at a time, just reaching up, getting long from one side and then the other. Mm hmm Good. Then allow your arms to come down by your sides and maybe even shake that out a little bit. What would it feel like to maybe feel that stretching sensation through your abdomen and through your torso? Maybe even kind of like stretching forward through your abdomen, coming into somewhat of a back bend shape. What does that feel like? And then what does it feel like to maybe round and stretch and lengthen through the backside of your body? Any, any way that feels really playful, interesting, getting really curious about it, introducing some light movement and stretching the backside of you. And then coming back to center, come into a side bend, maybe even bend your knees, come down to one side, keep reaching the top arm up toward the ceiling in order to enhance the stretching, the lengthening through one side of your torso. And keep on little small micro movements to make sure you're not locked in position, but just feeling the stretch. And then come back up through center and come the other way and feeling some stretch on the other side of your torso and side bending. Just little micro movements and like a wave moving through your whole system 
in order to make sure that you're not locking up in the position, but still feeling mm, stretch. And then come back up through center. Now, make, taking this, making this really small, come into your hands and try to experience the stretch to your fingers and your hands. What would that feel like? Moving through your fingers, all 10 digits, experiencing stretch. You'll be allowing that to carry down into your wrists. Uh, taking the quality of the stretch in your hands, the delicacy, bringing it back into your arms in a spontaneous way, experiencing stretch and allowing stretch to move kind of wave-like through your system, allowing it to carry into your torso, bringing your head and neck along with it, part of the conversation. How might you feel stretch even down into your pelvis, into your buttocks? And then how might you expand stretch, this feeling of creating stretchy waves through your body into your legs, upper legs, lower legs, and even your feet and toes, kind of like your hands, and maybe spend a few moments just exploring feet and toes, moving toes, all 20 digits now, moving feet and hands. And again, bring it back out into your whole body, including all of it, feeling stretch. The whole body, this elastic thing that gets to move in waves through space spontaneously and stretch big. Whoa. Okay. And then allow that to settle and simply stand in a place. You can face in any direction, take any posture that feels natural. And allow yourself to feel the effects of that stretch. Maybe even noticing the echo of the stretch inside of you, your breath moving, the beating of your heart. So feel like to notice the effects of feeling a stretch sensation. Feeling your feet on the earth. Pausing with curiosity. <laughs> uh, and then start to shift your weight from foot to foot. It's coming out of it very lightly, out of the pause really lightly. And as you shift your weight from side to side, from foot to foot, what we'll do is start to march. Come a little bit closer. Keep on marching. And in marching, now you can keep marching or you can bring it into a little jog. Just think very little energy output needed. Like what is the easiest jog that you can come into? And the arms might be involved or they might be hanging. And then take this jog around, forward, back, maybe side. Maybe circling around your room. Just a little jog. Now, usually when we speed up, increase like the rapidity of how we are moving in a jog sensation, in a run, we increase the effort and muscular engagement. I'd like us to explore and kind of letting go to increase the speed. So think of really letting go and increase the speed to any amount for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
one and then slow it back down to the really easy pace, really, really easy. Reminding yourself to move it around or to keep it more steady. Okay. Now, I'd like us to try the exact opposite. Speeding up by really gripping the muscles, by hugging the muscle to the bone really strongly. So from here, in a moment, I'll tell you when, you're gonna really like engage the muscles in order to speed up. So engage the muscles really tight and lots of effort for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then slow it down. Really easy, really, really easy. Just moving around space. Woo. What does it feel like? Kind of settle back in. Is there a difference from the previous one and this one, and especially in the transition to back to the easy? All right. Now, I invite you to maybe play around with finding the right balance between the two. Letting go, also some muscular engagement. We'll speed up one more time. So ready, set, begin to speed up. All right. What amount of letting go, what amount of maybe engagement helps to serve this purpose? What is the balance here? And now, Keeping this speed up, bring it into some spontaneous dance. Think of maybe tap dancing, feet on the floor. How much you keep a little bit of muscular engagement, enough letting go to keep freedom happening, just moving around space. Mm-hmm, that's it. How might your arms and torso get involved? What is needed, but mostly noticing your feet on the floor, the speed, the engagement needed. It's kind of spontaneous, fast, run-like tap dancing. Your own tap dance. Okay, and now, as you feel ready, allowing that to settle, and again, coming to a place of relative stillness, letting that land in your body, noticing what that feels like. Unless we take the time to pause, we often don't notice what is happening. We move from one thing to the next, so seldom do we take the opportunity to pause and to integrate and to learn. What effect did that have on your system today? All right. Now, lastly, you start to bounce to your knees. On your arms to and hang by your sides, inviting a bounce. Feeling the bounce come up through your legs, to your torso, and your torso can even kind of bounce along with it, being a little bit flyable, a little bit, woo, a little bit more like bouncy jello, your arms as well, and express a bounce. And you can even bring your arms up and around by your sides and come onto the balls of your feet and walk around space. How might feel good to walk around your space with this bounce sort of impulse? What does bounce feel like? All right, maybe playing around with the bounce being really light, moving upward, moving up toward the sky, just bounce and you could float away. And then having the bounce be really heavy, like it's dripping down, dragging you down toward the floor. But maybe in a pleasant way, like ooh, dripping off any tension that you're holding. 
been playing around with light bounce and with heavy bounce. Okay, allowing bounce to settle. Again, come to some place where you can be in relative stillness. Do you feel any echo? Is there any information to be mined from the experience of bounce? What did that do? And then to transition and come onto our mats, start by feeling a shake just in your knees. It's like a little tremor in your knees. And allow that to, to expand and come up into your hips. Almost like your feet are in ground that it's really shaking. You can even move them around a little bit. Lift one foot and then the other. So your legs ex expressing a kind of shake, just like Ugh. And then let it come up into your pelvis and in your low belly. I'm keeping it in your legs and your feet, but it's traveling up. And then into your upper chest, into your shoulders and shoulder blades, into your arms, your fingers, and into your head, your neck. I'm just kind of carrying your head and neck along with, and to the degree that you that feels okay on your head and neck, maybe creating some impulses with head and neck too. Just okay. And then standing tall. And this pause here will bring us onto our mats. So maybe pause for a couple of breaths, just in stillness, and then you'll open up your mat if you haven't already. Mm. That's it. So turn and face the short edge of your mat. Stand tall. Stand in Tadasana. This feeling, the response, feeling the work that we did continue to echo through your body. And using that kind of freedom in movement, even in more structured things like sun salutations, which is what's next. Surya Namaskara A, inhale, lift your arms up over your head and reach up. On your exhale, fold down over your legs. Inhale, come up partway, Ardha Uttanasana, fingertips to the floor or to shins. Then exhale, step back to plank. Inhale, shift slightly further forward. And exhale, lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, your choice. And exhale, downward facing dog. And a few breaths here. Now, as you breathe and hold a more static shape, notice what's still moving through your body. Noticing that your body is available for movement even when you're in stillness. That even when we're still, we are an expression of movement. That the processes internally keep on moving. That the movement of processes and energy keep on moving through our system. And instead of gripping to hold the position, can where can we let go? Be more available for movement. Take one last inhale. On your exhale, bend your knees and walk or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, come up part way, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold down over your legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up, Ardha Namaskarasana. Exhale, lower your arms down by your sides, stand tall. Again, inhale, lift your arms above your head, reach up. Exhale, fold down over your legs. 
Inhale, come up part way. Exhale, step or hop back and lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra, your choice. And exhale, downward facing dog. Again, anytime we pause, you can notice the breath as it moves in and out. Notice also, and recall how it felt to move freely. It's more kind of dynamic, spontaneous movement. Can we get a sense internally of that? And what effect does that have on how the muscles are working to hold this shape? Just being curious. One more inhale. On your exhale, bend your knees, walk or hop forward. Inhale, come up part way, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold down over your legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up, Urdhva Namaskarasana. Exhale, lower your arms down by your sides and stand tall. One more like that, inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, fold down over your legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, come up part way, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step or hop back, Chakturanga. Inhale, curl your chest up. Exhale, downward facing dog, Adamuka. And again, it's an opportunity to pause, assess, notice. Flurry of movement, a more organized fashion, a familiar shape that we put our bodies in. How might we be curious about it, even though we've been here a lot of many, many times before? How can we refine it? Think about it differently. Think about it anew. One more inhale. On your exhale, bend your knees, walk or hop forward. Inhale, come up part way, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold down over your legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up and reach up. And exhale, lower your arms down by your sides and stand tall. Lunging salutation, inhale, lift your arms up, reach up. Exhale, fold down over your legs. Inhale, lengthen your spine and stretch your left leg back. Lower your left foot, bend your left knee, lower down, point your left foot, and then come up, Anjaneyasana. And sink down into your legs. On your inhale, reach up to your fingertips, lift your sternum up. Then exhale, step back and lower down, Chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. And to downward facing dog. And take a breath here. And exhale. Inhale, lift your left leg up toward the ceiling. Exhale, place your left foot forward. Lower your right knee down, point your right foot and come up on Janayasana. Exhale, sink down into your legs. Yeah. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, bring your hands down and step your right foot forward. Inhale, come up part way, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold down over your legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up, Urdhva Namaskarasana. Exhale, lower your arms down by your sides and stand tall. Do the second side, inhale, lift your arms up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch your right leg back, lengthen to your spine, and then lower your right knee and point your right foot, come up on Janayasana. And sink down into your legs a little further. Inhale, lift up to your arms, to your sternum. And exhale, step back to plank, lower down Chakturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. And to downward facing dog. And breathe. One breath. Inhale, lift your right leg up. Exhale, place your right foot forward. Bend your left knee, point your left foot, come up into Anjaneyasana. And sink down into your legs. Inhale, reach up to your fingertips, to your sternum. And exhale, bring your hands down and step forward. Inhale, come up part way, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up. 
and exhale, lower your arms down by your sides. Okay, one more sun salutation. Surya Namaskar B. Bend your knees with your feet hip width distance or legs all the way together. Stretch your arms up. Utkatasan. If your feet are apart, peek down, check to make sure that your knees are pointing directly over your toes. Inhale, reach up, sit a little deeper. One more time, inhale, reach up. And exhale, straighten your legs and fold. Inhale, come up partway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step or hop at Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up toward the ceiling. Exhale, place your right foot all the way between your hands. Spin your left heel in and down and come up into Virabhadrasana one. We'll pause for a breath here. Sink down into your legs. And keep your gaze forward or draw your gaze up and join your palms. Reach up and exhale, step back, lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg up toward the ceiling. Exhale, place your left foot full, spin your right heel in and down and rise up, Virabhadrasana one. And sink down into your legs, grounded. And as you lift up, you can keep your gaze forward or draw your gaze up and join your palms and reach up. Exhale, step back, lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, curl your chest up. Exhale, Aramukha Shpanasana, downward facing dog. Couple breaths here, pausing, noticing. And we're back, pausing in the familiar shape, down dog. What wants to grip? Can you send the echo of movement to that area in order so that it doesn't grip, that it just works enough to stabilize, to hold the position? One more inhale here. On your exhale, bend your knees, walk or hop forward. Inhale, come up partway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold down over your legs. Inhale, bend your knees, come up Utkatasana. And exhale, stand, lower your arms down by your sides and stand and be at ease. So not in a yoga pose. We'll take a moment to pause and to notice the effects of sun salutations. How does this feel in your system, in your body? What happened? It's tracking. How does that feel different than perhaps doing some spontaneous movement, some creative spontaneous movement, but more structure, some movement that happens. Maybe it feels similar, maybe it feels different. Just noticing. And turn and face the long edge of your mat now and grab your blocks. Place them off the back edge of your mat, just like so. So the block should be about wrist distance apart if you stretch your arms out to your sides, bring them horizontal. And we'll do some, some standing poses together facing the long edge of the mat. First option for transition is to step out and to step in. So let's just practice that one. Step your feet wide, bring your arms out to the sides. Your ankles should be approximately as wide as your wrists. And then step back in to Tadasana, feet together. Option two, hop out, hop in. So let's practice that. Hop out or step out if that's your choice. And then step or hop in. Good. Okay. So let's proceed. Step or hop out. Bring your legs wide. Let's start with the left side first this time. Turn your left toes out about 90 degrees and your right toes in slightly, and then bend your left knee, coming into Virabhadrasana two. Noticing as well that this is, we're putting our bodies in a very specific shape. And get the sensation as though you're dragging your feet toward one another. So Virabhadrasana two, left leg forward. Look out over your left fingertips and let's take a few breaths. Feeling available for movement, but noticing what it's like 
to co-contract the muscles to hold the bone, hold the body in a shape. And straighten your left leg, turn your left toes forward, we'll go to the second side, turn your right toes out, 90 degrees, and then bend your right knee. Virabhadrasana two on the second side. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just breathing steadily, evenly. A couple more breaths, hugging the muscle to the bone, holding in a particular shape. Noticing how the breath is moving, even here. And then straighten your right leg and turn your right toes forward. Step or hop your feet in. Stand tall at the center of your mat. And then step or hop out. Coming into our second posture. Turn your left toes out 90 degrees. Make sure your right toes are pointing straight forward. Bend your left knee. Virabhadrasana two. Taparasva Konasana, inhale here. Exhale, tip your torso to your left. Place your hand either down to the floor or to a block. We had prepped our blocks for a reason. Stretch your right arm close to the right side of your face. Reach out through your right fingertips and peek up underneath the top arm. Still hugging muscle to the bone, getting the sensation that you're drawing from your feet all the way into your hips to stabilize the hip joints. One more breath. And then come back up, warrior two. Straighten your left leg, turn your left toes forward. Turn your right toes out 90 degrees. Make sure your left toes are pointing straight forward and then bend your right knee. And coming into warrior two shape, inhale here. Exhale, Parsva Konasana, tip your torso to your right. And bring your hand down to the floor or to a block. Stretch your left arm close to the left side of your face. Peek up underneath your top arm. Again, should be pretty familiar pose than yoga practice. Coming in, holding, breathing, noticing the code contraction that needs to happen between the muscular structures to hold the shape. And drawing from your feet to your hips. And keep your legs strong as you come back up where you're two. Straighten your right leg, turn your right toes forward and step or hop your feet back in, stand tall. Step or hop your feet wide. Mm -hmm. Three konasana, triangle pose, turn your left toes out about 90 degrees. Make sure that your right toes are pointing straight forward. Draw from your feet all the way into your hips already here, strengthening your legs. Tip your torso to your left. Either bring your hand down to the floor or to a block. Right. If you don't have blocks handy, you can rest your right hand on your shin, but don't press. It's not very good for your knee. Stretch your arms apart. Maybe look up and breathe. Noticing the static shape. And even there's a small bit of movement here, but the aim is to hold the bones in a particular shape, hold the body in a particular shape. Keep breathing. And keep your legs really strong as you come back up. Keep your torso up, turn your left toes forward, and turn your right toes out 90 degrees. Make sure your left toes are pointing straight forward. Strengthen your legs and tip your torso to your right this time. Bring your hand down to the floor or to a block. You can lightly rest your hand on your shin. And you can turn your gaze up, if and only if that feels okay on your neck. Holding, breathing, pausing. One more steady breath here in this shape. And then strengthen your legs, lift your torso up, turn your right toes forward, step your hop, hop your feet back in, stand tall. Mm -hmm. Now, 
From here, you take your hands behind your back and either clasp opposite elbows, or you can bring your hands into what's called Pashima Namaskar, wiggling your hands up your back in a reverse prayer position. So either one of those, I'll clasp opposite elbows so you can see that, and take a wide stance, hop or step. And then bring your feet in a little bit on each side, so slightly more narrow stance. Start by turning your right foot in really strongly, like you're trying to point your toes toward the upper left hand, so upper right hand corner of your mat on the short side. Then turn your left toes out 90 degrees, facing the short edge of your mat. Turn your hips, turn your torso to face your left leg. Inhale, lengthen to your spine. Exhale, bring your torso down until it's parallel to the floor. Pause here. Parsvottanasana. Intense one-legged forward bend, stretch. Now, if your abdomen is close to your left thigh, you can come down further by just rounding mostly your upper back to draw your face toward your shin. Keep breathing. More balance is required here. So just noticing how the muscles have to work to hold this shape. And slowly make your way up, coming up part way, and then all the way up with a straight spine, and turn all 10 toes back forward. Now, if you're clasping opposite elbows, switch the clasp <laughs> so we're nice and even. Turn your left foot in really strongly so that your toes point up toward the upper left hand corner of the short edge of your mat. Turn your right toes at 90 degrees and then turn your torso and hips to face your right leg. Inhale here. Exhale, bring your torso down until it's parallel to the floor. Pause, stabilize. And then if your abdomen is close to your right thigh, surround your upper back to draw your face down toward your shin. Breathing, being, stretching. Okay, and strong legs begin to come back up with a nice long spine. Come up, turn all 10 toes back forward. Release the clasp behind your back and step or hop your feet back together. Okay. Step or hop your feet wide. Same distance as we just did for Parjvottanasana. Now I'll be coming after a twisted triangle. So for Parivritta Trikonasana, turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out about 90 degrees, turn your hips and torso to face your left leg. And hinge forward from your hips, and this time you know, bring your fingertips all the way down to the floor. So instead of arms behind your back, fingertips down to the floor, it can even be a slight bend in the front knee if needed. Now grab your block and place it to the pinky edge of your left foot and take your right hand and place your hand on your block. And you can choose the level, it could be the medium level or the low level or the high level. And then start to turn your chest to your left and stretch your left arm up. Twisted triangle pose, Parivrita Trikonasana. Fun breathing. Notice what's needed to stabilize here. And one more breath. And slowly bring your left hand down. Move the block out of the way and fingertips to the floor. And place your hands up onto your hips. Lift your torso up, turn all 10 toes back forward. We'll go to the second side. Turn your left foot in and turn your right foot out 90 degrees. So I want the back foot at a 45 or more angle and then turn your hips and your torso to face your right leg. Inhale here, exhale, hinge forward from your hips and then come down and place your fingertips on the floor. You can be a slight bend in your right knee if needed. 
And take your block and place it to the pinky edge of your right foot. Take your left hand and place it onto your block. And then from here, it's really strong legs, start to turn your chest to your right and stretch your right arm up. Again, if you find that the level of block isn't quite right, you can always come out, adjust, come back in. Just breathing, being in the shape and noticing. Okay, and then slowly lower your right hand down. Move the block out of the way, bring fingertips to the floor. Strengthen your legs and place your hands on your hips. Lift your torso upright. Turn all 10 toes back forward. And step or hop your feet back together. Okay, now taking this out of a yoga pose context, again, might even need to wiggle it out a little bit. Come into a position where you're just standing. Any position at ease. Noticing and tracking what happened with doing those more held static shapes. What is the pacing of the flow through your system that you feel? What parts of your body are you noticing now? Mm. Okay, and then letting that go, we have one more little project to go after. Turn and face the short edge of your mat now and stand tall. So from here, we'll come into lunging shapes by simply stepping the leg back. So transfer your weight to your right leg. And then as you swing your arms up, you'll bring your left leg back. Uh-huh, good. And then to come back forward, you'll just simply lower your arms and step your left foot forward. Uh-huh, and then to bring your right leg back, you'll swing your arms up and right leg back into a lunge. Mm-hmm, good. And then from here, you'll swing your arms down and step your right foot forward. Let's just do that a couple of times. Swing arms up, left leg back and step forward, right leg back, and step forward, left leg back, and step forward, right leg back, and step forward, left leg back, step forward, a couple more times each side. And once you've done a couple more rounds on each side, stand tall at the top of your mat. Mm -hmm. Good. And we'll add some pieces from there. So lunge, left leg back. So right leg forward, left leg back. And we'll turn to the long edge of the mat and come into a, what's called horse stance or goddess shape. So you'll spin your left heel in and down and then even in and come into a squat facing the long edge of your mat. Mm -hmm. Good. Now from here, you'll transition to a lunging shape with your left leg forward. So swing your left arm down and forward, swing both arms up, spin your left heel up, lunge toward the back edge of your mat. Yep, that's it, nice. And then come back through center, through horse stance, goddess shape. If you are a dancer, you might know this as second position plie. And then lunge with right leg toward the front edge of your mat. We'll go back and forth this way for a few more rounds. So coming through center, got a shape, and then lunge to the back of your mat. And then through center, and lunge to the front of your mat. And you choose the pace, but try to hit each position for just a moment, kind of like a little bounce. Kind of call upon the bounce that we did earlier spontaneously. We'll bounce in the center, bounce into the lunge, bounce through center, and bounce. So bounce, like bouncing a ball, just hitting the position and going to the next one and hitting the position and going to the next one. Okay, and when you're facing the front of, edge of your mat again, 
Then step forward, stand tall. We'll pause for a moment at the top of the mat. Catch your breath. And then we'll go to the second side. Lunge your right leg back into a lunging shape. And again, we'll start slow. So turn open into goddess pose shape, horse stance, and then lunge toward the back edge of your mat. And then come through center again, in squatting shape, and then come to the front edge of your mat again. And now at your own pace, bouncing through the center and lunging back through the center and lunge in front, just back and forth. You choose the pace, right? You won't do much more, just maybe a couple more passes. Okay, and then when you come forward again, Step forward, stand tall. And then making this, again, less formal, instead of thinking Tadasana, just think standing. But you might wanna shake it out a little bit first through your legs, that's a lot of work. You might wanna take a wider stance. A little bit more, maybe heart rate spike. How does it feel for your heart, heartbeat right now? What is your breath doing? Mm, good. And from here now, come into downward facing dog, just from where you are, and into some some stretching. Start by bringing your right foot up between your hands, coming into a lunge. And bend your left knee and lower it down and point your left foot. Mm -hmm. So a little lunge with your right foot forward. And place your left hand slowly off to your left or the edge of your mat or even outside your mat. And we'll come into a twisted quad stretch. Stretch your right arm back, bend your left knee, reach in, clasp. Didn't necessarily mention this, but if it would be helpful to pad the back knee, you can always come out, fold your mat over, or grab a blanket. Just breathing into this quad stretch, which is needed and probably feels pretty good after all the quad work in the lunging sequence we just did. And then slowly release the clasp on your left foot, coming back through center, and then step back into downward facing dog. And breathe. Then step your left foot up between your hands, coming into a lunge, low lunge, Anjaneyasana shape, but we're not bringing the torso up. Move your right hand off to your right, the edge of your mat or even off your mat. Stretch your left arm back into a lunging twist. Okay. You can stay right here as well. This is also going to be working the stretch. However, if you want to deepen, bend your right knee, lift your right foot, reach back and clasp. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We had a little cameo <laughs> from someone live. Just breathing, being in this stretch, feeling muscular structures that were just working be stretched out a little bit. Okay, and then slowly release, bring your left hand down, step back into downward facing dog. Mm. And next, now instead of bringing your foot forward, bring your shin up to your wrists. So it's oh, pigeon prep. Your right foot should go toward your left hand, right knee toward your right hand. 
and choose the angle of the front shin. The closer it is to 90 degrees, the deeper the stretch on the hip, but that might, might not be optimal today for you. You can bring your right heel close to the front of your left hip as much as needed. And also, you can place a block underneath your right hip if that helps to level out your pelvis. And fold down over your right shin as you're ready. Mm -hmm. Breathing. Allowing yourself to be here. One more breath. You need to lift your torso up. And you can either stay in this position and then fold back down in again, coming a little bit deeper into the forward bend stretch, or bend your left knee, reach back, clasp your foot, and come into a quad stretch in this shape. But doesn't have to come all the way in. If you want to more emphasize the quad stretch, you might narrow the angle of your front shin. Keep breathing. Breathing steadily. And then slowly release back foot if you grab that. If you're folded down in front of your shin, lift your torso up and come back to downward facing dog. Breathe even deeply. And bring your left shin forward. Same thing, second side, pigeon prep. Vataraja Kapotasana, prep. And choose the angle of the front shin, and position of the back leg. And also using blanket or block underneath your left hip if that's helpful. Once arranged, pull down over your left shin. Take a few breaths. And then lift your torso up either momentarily or keep it lifted. So it's lift up, reorganize, and then fold down again. Or you can take this into a quad stretch with your torso upright. You might bend your right knee, reach, clasp your right foot, and then hug it in. It's choosing the form that feels like it's serving you in this moment. Good, Good choices, everyone. Okay, and then slowly release right foot or lift your torso up and come into downward facing dog. Lower your knees down to the floor and uh, grab both of your blocks and place them for the top edge of your mat. And creating kind of like a, a column. And these blocks are just for you to have a little bit of a shelf for your elbows for one 
shoulder stretch, the arms overhead. So once you have it set up, the block set up, come to hands and knees behind your blocks. Bring your elbows onto your blocks, shoulder width distance apart. Join your palms together. And then start to crawl your knees back a little bit. And keep on knitting your rib cage in and up some engagement through your core muscles, even as you stretch your elbows forward and your head down. Take a few breaths here. And then slowly make your way up and out. Crawl your knees forward a little bit. Makes it easier to get your elbows off the blocks and sit. Now, bring your blocks out of the way. I have two options for you next. If you're closing back bend, would be really nice to come onto your back and lift up into bridge pose or come up into Ordva Dhanurasana, do that. If instead you would want, like to take this project further, this Ekapada Raja Kapotasana project further, you'll come into pigeon prep like we've been doing with a really narrow angle in the front shin. And then you'll come through the quad stretch and kind of turn to look back over your shoulder so that you can loop your hand towel. So I have a little theraband here or your strap around your foot. You'll bring it in, rotate your elbow up. So arm in close by the side, elbow forward and up to protect your shoulders. You come into that shape and then you'll bring perhaps the other hand onto the strap. Lastly, you could crawl your hand down toward your foot. Bring your hands to your foot and then bring your head back to come into the full shape. So your choice, if you're already working toward the first side, Nekapada Raja Kapotasana, keep going with that or some other sort of back bend shape and you'll do two rounds. First side, Nekapada Raja Kapotasana. And if you're in the first side, come out with control. Taking your time, taking it slow. You'll simply switch sides and start to work toward the second side. Same deal, get into the shape. And look over your right shoulder or left shoulder, depending which is the back leg for you, to get the loop around your foot and turn back forward and come into the shape. Again, taking your time, holding for a few breaths, coming out with steadiness, with awareness of what your body needs, the timing that it needs in transition. And then as you feel ready, you come into downward facing dog. And then from downward facing dog, slowly walk your hands back to your feet, coming to a standing forward bend. And place your hands on your hips, lengthen through your spine and stand up. 
Again, get another opportunity to pause. So standing not in any particular position, but just allowing yourself to stand. Notice what's happening in your system. So we did some static, more active standing poses. How did that feel in comparison to some more static stretching shapes? What's happening now? Pausing, noticing. And from this place of noticing and really being aware, so take a moment to be aware of the backside of your body. Don't often take the time to make a connection to this side of our body. What if you ask the backside of your body how it wanted to move? Right. You can draw inspiration from, from the things that we did earlier, but what would it feel like to move from the backside of your body? Almost listening for, for the next impulse and allow this conversation with the backside of your body to move you again down to the floor. For example, it might just say, I just want to sit down right away. Or there might be some stretch in there. What does want to stretch? There might be some shaking that needs to happen. I'm shaking anything off. There might even be some bounce that would be helpful. So just asking yourself what, what is needed in this moment to get you down to a position on the floor for resting. And then bringing yourself into a comfortable position for resting, which could be lying flat on the floor or I'll show a suggestion on my screen here. Could even be supported fish pose. Matsyasana blocks underneath your upper back and head. So using props, not using props. Arrange your body in the position. Feels like it would be really supportive for you right now. Yeah, then sink down in. And we'll have an extended resting period here. So sinking in. Having done all of these different movement explorations and pausing to integrate and to notice what is happening. Notice what is moving through your body now. Notice if there's any place on your body that is still gripping or holding. Is there anything that you can let go of for just a little while? Trusting that the surfaces beneath you are solid and will support you. And the best thing that you can do to benefit from this next piece of class is to allow those surfaces to support you completely. And from this place, I invite you to Think of one intention 
that you want to bring into the end of this practice. It might be something that you want, that you learned from the movement part of practice that you want to carry through your day. It might be something more broad, like you want to approach life with more compassion meet the people in your life with more compassion maybe meet yourself with more kindness and compassion just connecting with one positive intention And then I invite you to think of something that will serve as a resource, a safe space or a safe thing that you can visit. This could even be a place inside your own body. Maybe your pinky finger feels really calm. feels like a safe refuge. Maybe there's a person or a place that can serve as your resource in this moment. Taking a moment to bring that into focus, your resource. And with this in mind and knowing that you can return to the resource anytime, we'll begin to move through all the parts of the body. If there's any place that feels maybe not quite right, you don't want to hang out there, you can simply go and hang out with the resource you identified. And then perhaps join back in when or if you feel ready. We'll begin now by noticing the hinges of your jaw, your lips, teeth, and gums. Noticing the roof of your mouth and your tongue. Your tongue as it comes down into your throat. I invite you to notice your inner ears and your middle ears and outer ears. Moving up to your cheekbones, the sinuses that reside there, and the space behind your nose and your nostrils. Opening up your awareness to the sinus cavities. Draw your awareness to the space deep beneath your eyes. Maybe even thinking of this space being a soft cushion that your eyes can rest into. Feeling the space around your eyes soften. I invite you to draw your awareness up into your forehead. Maybe imagining your forehead like a soft blanket that can just drape, smoothing out any wrinkles or gripping, and clumping, and a soft blanket of the skin on top of your forehead. 
and then the crown of your head, back of your head, the place where your head meets the top of your neck, creating space, almost imagining that your head and your neck could float just a millimeter apart from one another, creating a little bit of space. And feeling your neck and throat, and your shoulders, upper arms all the way to your elbows, forearms and wrists, and your palms and all of your fingers. Allowing your awareness to reside and rest in your hands. Draw awareness up through your arms and into your upper chest. Feeling the space beneath your collarbones and to the bottom of your sternum. And feeling your upper back where your shoulder blades are, and space between your shoulder blades. Feeling both the front and back at the same time, your upper back, upper chest. And then feeling the space just beneath that from your rib cage, bottom of your rib cage, all the way down to the top of your pelvis, in front, from sternum to pubic bones, to the top of your pelvis. And on the backside, feeling from the bottom tips of the shoulder blades, down through the bottom of the rib cage and to the low back, the sacrum, the top of the pelvis. And feeling both the front and back side, the lower part of the abdomen at the same time. Drawing your awareness into your hips and pelvis. And then your upper legs, knees, lower legs, ankles, and your feet and toes. Feeling awareness draw back up through your feet, into your pelvis, feeling all of your legs and feet. And adding on to that, your pelvis, attaching the two legs together. Moving up and feel awareness come into your torso, attaching torso to pelvis and legs. Moving out on both sides from shoulders all the way down through your fingertips, attaching awareness of your upper limbs, your arms. Moving up again, up through your neck, through your head, through your face. Attaching your head and expanding your awareness to your whole body. as sensation and in this space of being aware of the sensations momentarily arising in your body 
moment by moment. I invite you to think of one thing that you're grateful for. Maybe something that makes you really happy, brings you joy. Could be something that happened recently. Could be something that's always a source of happiness or joy. Just identifying that one thing. and allowing that to move throughout your whole body. Where do you feel that? How do you feel that? And with this feeling, open up to some, some sound sound of my voice and of harmonium.
slowly. Start to feel awareness come back to the surface. If you would like to remain still while noticing, stay still. If movement would be supportive here, you can introduce some movement into your body. As you're ready, taking it slow, and in whatever manner you'd like, make your way back up to a seated position. Once there, join your palms together at the center of your chest. And we'll end with a blessing. So taking your time to get into the seated position, bringing your palms together. And the blessing is really simple chants that you can either listen to or join in with me. It's Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om is an acknowledgement of our interconnection and Shanti is an offering of peace. So inhale deeply to prepare and exhale empty out completely and inhale for the chant. <laughs> for the gift of your company. <laughs>